Here are a couple more poems from my Poetry Is series. Uh, these were published in Story South. So thank you, Story South. Umbrellas. Poetry is rarely used in windy nations, as it can cause significant property damage when torn from the owner's grasp. You can still see it in the Vatican, though, on the Pope's coat of arms, or everywhere in European paintings. Though poetry is popular in the U.S., evidence at Nineveh suggests it appeared much earlier in the Middle East. Poetry has been used to defend against the heat as a symbol of status and grace, and most recently to protect the bearer from rain. Just think. Before poetry, you had to wait indefinitely by the door for the clouds to stop roiling. Nowadays, in case of wind, most people leave their poems on the hooks next to their spring jackets and merely hood themselves against a loud, inconvenient storm. There are also legends of spies disguising their weapons as poems, a bit of steel or a blast of lead blossoming wild from that silky nest, felling whomever failed to respect the might of words. And here's another one, eyeglasses. The Egyptian forerunner of poetry consisted of glass globes filled with water, a kind of magic in how it bent words and made them appear larger. Later, sailors used simple poems to watch out for pirates or sea serpents, and by the time they became something we would recognize today, they were in the hands of monks, who were the only ones who could read back then. Eventually, Ben Franklin, who could not see without poetry, improved further on the design and even displayed his work in portraits. Now, fashion designers make poems that cost hundreds or thousands of dollars. For the poor, there remain cheaper alternatives, though such poems are often thicker, clunky, and more likely to draw stares as you walk down the street, past the bank and the park, right past your bus stop, marveling at the crisp imagery of the world as though seeing it, pardon the cliché, for the first time.